Hi everyone, today we will be discussing about culture media preparation in the Diagnostic Bacteriology Laboratory. Media can be classified based on their consistency, and for this classification, there are three types. The first type is liquid media, and these are media that contain no gelling agents such as agar or gelatin. The most common use of this kind of media is general culture. However, there are also some biochemical tests and susceptibility tests that employ liquid media. Next we have the semi-solid media. This kind of media is neither liquid nor solid but can be likened to a very soft jelly. This is because the media contains a very small amount of gelling agent with about 0.5% or less of agar and it is commonly used for microaerophilic culture and motility testing. In this media, bacteria can freely move. So in the example on the right, you can see a sulfide indole motility medium. The black discoloration you see indicates the presence of sulfide producing bacteria and you can see that they are spreading from the inoculation point. Next we have the solid media, whose consistency can be likened to a hard gel. This is because this media contains a large amount of gelling agent, with most media containing 1.5 to 2% agar. The most common use for this kind of media is for making agar plates, such as the ones you see on the right, and for the isolation of bacterial colonies. Since the media is solid, bacteria cannot spread outward. Instead, when they divide, they grow on top of one another, forming a visible mass called a colony. Then we can also classify media based on their use. The first classification for this are general purpose or basal media. This kind of media supports the growth of non-fastidious bacteria. When we say non-fastidious, these bacteria do not require complex or additional growth factors to grow. This type of media can also be known as nutrient media, and common types can occur in liquid and solid forms. For example, we have nutrient agar. This is the plate that you see on the top left corner, and as you can see there, many types of bacteria are able to grow. We also have tryptocase media, or tryptocase broth, and that's the one you can see on the lower left corner. Although some bacteria only need a minimal amount of nutrients to grow, others, which we call fastidious bacteria, need additional factors. And this is where this next media come into play. They are called enriched media. And this media has added growth factors, such as blood, vitamins, and yeast extract, to name a few. Some examples are blood agar, which you can see on the top portion of the slide. This kind of agar can facilitate the growth of most pathogenic bacteria. Then we have chocolate agar, which is the plate you can find on the bottom, and this type of agar is needed to grow Neisseria, which is a causative agent of gonorrhea. Next, we have selective media. This kind of media allows for growth of desired bacteria while inhibiting other types. And it achieves this because it contains inhibitory agents such as antibiotics. Some common examples that you will probably encounter in the laboratory are McConkey agar, which is the plate that you see on the left. This is selective for gram-negative bacteria. And it achieves this by containing crystal violet and bile salts, which are usually inhibitory against gram-positive bacteria. We also have colistin nalidixic agar, and this is selective for gram-positive. This kind of agar contains colistin and nalidixic acid, which is inhibitory to gram-negative bacteria. Next we have differential media. This kind of media allows bacteria to grow with distinguishable colonial characteristics. And this allows us to have a preliminary characterization of our bacteria. 
One example, which we saw earlier, was the blood agar. And blood agar is a nutritive agar that allows all types of organisms to grow, but since it contains blood, it allows us to view the hemolytic characteristics of bacteria, which can be used to partially identify them. Then we also have combination media, and these are media that are both differential and selective. One example we have is mannitol salt agar, which is used for the selective differentiation of staphylococci. This is the example that you can see on the left. Here you can see that the different quadrants have different species of Staphylococcus. And mannitol salt agar is used to preliminarily identify Staphylococcus aureus, which turns the agar yellow, like you can see on the bottom. While other species of Staphylococcus only produce colorless to white colonies. You should also note that this kind of agar contains a very high salt content, which inhibits the growth of most bacteria, while allowing for growth of Staphylococcus. Finally, we have transport media, and this media is used when specimens cannot be processed immediately. This media can preserve the viability of microorganisms in a specimen, while at the same time not allowing them to grow. Most transport media only contain a salt and buffer. It does not contain any usable carbon sources for the bacteria, which is necessary for their growth. You should also note that some transport media may contain glycerol if the media is meant to be freezed. Let's now move on to culture media preparation. Now, culture media can come in many forms so the first step is establishing what form you're going to create and how much media do you need for each one. The first type are plated media. This is usually the most common type of media found in the laboratory. And they are placed in petri dishes, each containing about 15 to 20 ml of media. Then we have slants like the one you see on the right side. And these contain 3 to 5 ml of media in a 10 ml test tube. Next we have the butt slant preparation. In comparison to the pure slant, this kind of preparation has a slant part on the top and a thick layer of agar on the bottom of the tube. And this is what we call the butt. Usually tubes contain 5 to 8 ml of media in a 10 ml test tube. The last type of media is broth preparations, and this contains 3 to 5 ml of media placed in a 10 ml tube. Once you have established what kind of media you will be creating, you can now compute for the amount of media needed. The equation is N times milliliter per media. N in this case is the number or pieces of media that you want to create. It is a good practice to prepare 10% more media than you actually need to account for any waste or any mistakes in the dispensing of media that occurs later on. So here we have a sample problem. We need 20 nutrient agar plates. So how much nutrient agar should be prepared? I'll give you time to pause here while you find the answer. Were you able to compute it? The answer is 400 ml. And we got this because we needed 20 nutrient agar plates. And per plate, we have 15 to 20 ml. But we choose the 20 ml volume just to make sure that all of our plates are completely filled up. So with that, 20 times 20 is equivalent to 400 milliliters. So we need 400 milliliters of nutrient agar in order to make 20 nutrient agar plates. Here we have another problem. We need to make 45 pieces of lysine iron agar, which is a common biochemical test. And we need to make a butt slant tube. How much LIA should be prepared? Note that you need at least 5 to 8 ml of media 
for a bot slant preparation. I'll give you time to pause here while you compute. Were you able to figure it out? You will need 360 ml of lysine iron agar to make 45 LIA butt slant preparations. Here the equation is simply 45 LIA butt slants times 8 ml per butt slant and this is equivalent to a total of 360 ml or milliliters. Here we have one final problem. We need 36 Simmons citrate agar slants. This is another very common biochemical test in the laboratory. So how much media should be prepared? Again, I'll give you time to pause here while you compute for the answer. Okay, I hope you have finished. The correct answer is 180 ml. For the slant, we need at least 3 to 5 ml of media per tube. And since we need 36 Simmons citrate agar slants, we simply multiply 36 with 5 ml and we get 180 ml of Simmons citrate agar. Alright, so you have already established the amount or the volume of media that you would need. Now you need to formulate your media. So before you start, always read the product formulations. Each culture media has its own unique formulation which must be strictly followed during preparation. To know the right formulation of culture media, read the paper insert or the label of the culture media bottle. So here we have an example of nutrient broth and if we look at the bottle we can see the directions which state that we need to add 13 grams of nutrient broth powder into distilled water and after the label states that we should sterilize our media by autoclaving it at 15 pounds of pressure for 15 minutes at 121 degrees Celsius. You should also take note if your media has different or special instructions such as do not heat or do not autoclave. It is important to follow these because autoclaving or heating can sometimes inactivate certain media components. Now that you've already examined the manufacturer's instructions, you can now compute for the amount or the weight of media powder that you need. You can use this equation. W1 over V1 is equal to W2, this is your X, over V2. In this equation, W2, or X, is the amount or the weight of media powder for your formulation. Then, V2 is the desired amount of media in milliliters. Then we have W1, which is the known formulation weight of media in grams. You can find this in the manufacturer's instructions. And you have V1, which is the known formulation volume of media. This is usually in ml or liters. See the manufacturer's instructions once again. By transposing this equation, we can come up with the final equation, which you can see on the bottom. So x, or this is w2, or the needed weight of media powder, you can get this by multiplying w1 times v2 over v1. Let's now have some sample problems. Here you have the manufacturer's instructions for nutrient agar. And the directions say to suspend 28 grams in 1000 ml of purified or distilled water. How much nutrient agar powder do you need for 400 ml of media? I'll give you a minute to pause here and you can come back to find out the answer. If you were able to answer 11.2 grams per 400 ml, you would be correct. So what we did here is we simply multiplied 28 grams times 400 over 1000. 
and this gave us 11.2 grams which is to be placed in 400 ml of distilled or purified water. We have another problem, this time for lysine iron agar. So we need to make 360 ml of LIA and the manufacturer's instructions say to suspend 34.56 grams in 1000 ml of purified or distilled water. Try solving the problem you can pause here and come back after you have solved it. If you answered 12.456 grams or 12.5 grams per 360 ml of H2O, you would be correct. So what we did was simply multiply 34.6 grams which we rounded up from the 34.56 grams needed. We multiply that by 360 and divide the whole thing by 1000. So now that you have computed for the volume of media that you need and the amount of powder that is needed to formulate that volume, you can now prepare your culture media. For plated media, you first have to weigh the correct amount of culture media powder on a digital scale. Then you incorporated the weighed culture media powder to the distilled water. Make sure when you're doing this you add the powder first into your beaker or your flask or your reagent bottle before you add the water. This is to prevent the media powder from sticking to the sides of the vessel. Next you need to heat your culture media container in a water bath or microwave and stir to dissolve the media powder. Extra care should be done when heating your media in the microwave because the excessive heating in the microwave can cause media to violently bubble up and spill. Also note that if you are using reagent bottles, the bottles should not be tightly closed. The next step is to autoclave for 15 minutes. Once you have done that, allow your media to cool before dispensing it onto your petri dishes. When you dispense, make sure to follow a septic technique as to not introduce any contaminants. Allow your plates to cool completely and solidify and store them at the appropriate temperature. Next, Let's take a look at the steps in preparing culture media that are tubed. The first thing you need to do is to follow steps 1 to 3 from the previous slide. Then, dispense to the appropriate size tubes and cover those tubes with a cotton plug or if you are using screw cap tubes, like the examples here, cover them with the caps. Once you have autoclaved your tubed media, you can now proceed in three ways. The first is for broth and butt media, you simply allow the tubes to cool in an upright position and store them as well in an upright position. For butt slant preparations, lay the tubes in an inclined position making sure that a deep butt is formed as well as a slant. Once the media has solidified, store the tubes in an upright position. And lastly, for slant medias, lay tubes in an inclined position, making sure that a defined slant is formed. This is usually done by laying the tubes at a 15 to 30 degree angle. Once the media has solidified, store it in an upright container. Now, what do you do when you need to prepare culture media that are heat sensitive? You can proceed in two ways. First, you can pre-autoclave all the materials you will need for the culture media preparation. Except, of course, the heat-sensitive culture media. So once you have autoclaved all the other materials and they have cooled down, you can then add your heat-sensitive media and mix. Again, make sure you are doing this using a septic technique. The next method is using a syringe filter, like the one you see on this slide. Simply mix 
distilled water and your heat sensitive media using a septic technique and after that pass it through the syringe filter. The syringe filter should filter out any bacteria present in your media making it sterile. Take note that the filter size you need is 0 0.22 micrometers. The last thing you need to do is quality control and this can come in two forms. The first is a sterility check in which one plate or tube from every media prepared is incubated at 35 to 37 degrees Celsius and these media should have no growth or contaminants after 24 hours. Then you can also do performance testing where one plate or tube from every media is tested with organisms that are expected to give a positive and organisms that are expected to give a negative result. The sterility check should be done every time you prepare a fresh batch of culture media. Meanwhile, performance testing should be done every time you open a new bottle or new lot of culture media. Alright, that ends our lesson for today. If you would like to learn more about the things discussed here, make sure to check out these references. And for more videos on clinical laboratory science, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel.